Welcome to the geology station. The study of rocks. It's close. It's the study of the earth. And so when you talk about the earth, you talk a lot about rocks. Why? Because uh, the earth is made rock. of rocks. It's made of rocks. Yes. Does anyone know what's the very center of the earth? The core. The core! Okay, so what I want you to do is take your fist and stick it out right there in the middle of the circle. Um, at the very center of the earth you get something called the inner core, and it's solid metal and it's really, really, really hot. What comes after the inner core? What's the next layer in the earth? Does anyone know? The outer core. Why don't you be the outer core? So what I want you to do is take one hand. So what you're going to do is you're going to be moving because it's actually liquid and moving around. So you're the outer core and you're actually liquid metal and you're a little bit less hot. So why is the inner core solid and the outer core liquid? Because there's a lot of pressure on that inner core? Right, you've got all the pressure from all the layers of the earth pressing onto that inner core and so it's making it a solid ball. So next layer is actually the largest layer. Does anyone know what it's called? It's the mantle. So why don't you be the mantle? What I want you to do is take two hands and place them like that because you are the thickest layer. And so you're actually a little bit less hot. And then finally... The crust. The <laughs> crust. All right, so Eric, why don't you put yours there? Okay, so where do we live? On the crust. On the crust, right, on the surface of the earth. Okay, great, thanks. So we've got all these rocks and they're inside the earth, but how do they get exposed at the surface of the earth? Does anyone know? I don't know if you all have ever heard of something called plate tectonics. Has anyone heard of that? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, oh, yeah. The puzzle pieces. Kind of, yeah. So you can think about the crust of the earth as a giant jigsaw puzzle. So everyone take your hands and put one hand in. Okay, and kind of make a globe shape, a ball shape, yeah. So what would happen if, you, what, well what's happening is they're moving, they're on this slippery layer that's just beneath the crust. And so they're kind of moving, and so what happens if they run into each other? They push up. Yeah, it pushes the earth together, so you get like volcanoes or you get mountains. And then sometimes they pull apart, and when they pull apart you get big cracks in the earth. Has anyone seen the Palisades? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, so it's this giant like rock cliff going along, you can see it right along the Hudson River. And so what happened there, there's this big crack in the earth and molten rock was pushed up and it cooled and hardened. And um, it looked something like this. This is actually a piece of the Palisades that you can pass around and look at. Cool. And I've got some more pieces of the Palisades right here. So this actually brings us to talk about the three different types of rock that there are. Does anyone know the three different kinds of rocks or the way you can classify them? Um, metamorphic? Yeah, Igneous. that's one of them. Uh -huh. Sedimentary. Yeah, that's all of them. So does anyone know what kind of rock this is? It's an igneous rock. So igneous rocks are formed either close to the surface of the earth with molten rock um, cooling or they're formed when uh, like a volcano erupts or a, just like I was talking about the crack in the earth like the palisades um, and so when you look at this rock you can actually see do you see the little specks in it all those little different colored specks yes do you know what those are no minerals yeah uh. these are all you're looking at the minerals that um, make up the rock so all rocks are composed of minerals this is a sedimentary rock and you can actually see the layers in that rock, or in this rock. The different layers of mud or clay or whatever got washed in and, and built up. You get these, those rocks and what are they called? Sedimentary. Sedimentary, sedimentary rocks, right, because they're composed of sediment. Sometimes things get trapped in the layers and when that happens you might get a rock that looks like this. Or a rock that looks like this. Does anyone know what those little indentations are in the rocks? Fossils? Shells? Well, they're fossil imprints. imprints. Yeah, you can actually look. I have some shells here. And you can kind of see how they would look. They'd be pressed into the rock and they would make those indentations. So you can see how that one is kind of like the back of the shell. Cool. Yeah. I was saying how you need heat and pressure to create rocks. Well, sometimes rocks get, after they're created, um, they get exposed to more heat and pressure and they undergo a change. What kind of rocks do you think those make? Metamorphic. Yeah, metamorphic, because metamorphos means to change. So when you get metamorphic rocks, you might get a rock that looks like this rock. 
this is a nice. So you can actually see the kind of timeline with rocks sometimes. Uh, you can start off with this kind of shale, uh, which started up, probably started off as a mudstone, just mud that was kind of, you could probably break it apart really easily, and it got exposed to some heat pressure and became the shale. And more heat and pressure, and it became a slate, so it became even harder. And I'm kind of missing one. This would be a phyllite that looks like that, but shinier. And then eventually you'd get a schist. And you can see how this looks very different than these rocks, but it's actually still related. And then eventually the schist would become a nice. In Manhattan, they actually have a lot of schist and nice. And um, so you can probably find this if you see a rock that's really shiny like this, and probably made out of, it's made out of mica, which is really soft, so you can even like stick your finger in there and kind of break it off. And yeah, you picked up a piece of mica right here, and you can actually break it apart, and it comes off in sheets. And um, in fact, in this place in Russia, they actually use giant sheets of mica as window panes because when you break it off, it is uh, transparent. You can look in your own backyard for different rocks and each rock tells a story. And if you see the zebra stripe one, you know it's nice. And you'll probably be able to see some. So you should do some geology in your own time. Sediment. <laughs> <laughs> All right.